this video we're going to cover Profiler Builder uh, and how the latest release candidates is kind of game changing when it comes to building installation profiles. So, uh, for those of you who haven't heard of Profiler, it's an, basically an extension to the way that Drupal 7 and 6, for that matter, uh, handle installation profiles. It gives you some additional options, and it's basically just an API module. Uh, so you get additional flexibility in creating an installation profile, uh, such as adding content, adding users, uh, defining variables, things like that that you traditionally would have had to do through a lot of manual intervention and features you can do through profiles. Uh, the project I'm going to talk about that I've worked on is Profiler Builder. So you see, you might also be interested in this. Uh, Profiler Builder just saw a release candidate today. Um, but what it does now, what it used to do, was just kind of you go to a page and click it and you get text fields that would say what the copy and paste in there. Uh, now it basically is uh, two distributions and installation profiles what features is to site building. Uh, so it's going to automatically give you the uh, code that you need to write. And if you use Drush, you can actually have it just auto implement it in the correct location with the correct file structure. Uh, so this will save a lot of time and lead to more accurate builds. Um, so, see so what we're going to do is get uh, the one X RC one, um, which I've done. I have it in this little sample space I'm playing. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is go to configuration after you've installed it, and uh, development, and then profile building. And so what you'll get is you get this form. Right? So it's going to try and populate it with defaults that make sense. So typically, I just go down and hit download profile. But uh, what it does is it grabs your site name and makes it the name here. Uh, it gives you automatic machine name that will be generated. Uh, so this will basically be the folder directory structure of your install profile. You can edit this if you really want to. Or not really think you should. But uh, description, it pulls from the site slogan. You can give us whatever you want. This is what displays on the install profile. You can use this. Uh, there's this exclusive flag, which hasn't actually been fully committed to uh, Drupal 7, but it's currently in the issue queue. Basically, you'll be able to have a flag that says exclusive equals one. And if that's in your install profile, it'll skip a few steps uh, during installation. So it's really good for distribution. It streamlines things so people don't get the, uh, the standard and testing types of things that they, they're really not interested in with the distribution in there. Uh, then, profiler includes. So right now, the module has support for dependencies, which you need to do anything like this, uh, and variables. So this will go and export your variables table. Uh, it takes out a lot of settings that it knows would cause problems. Uh, so you know it takes out things that would have potential security issues as well. This isn't going to copy your, your Drupal private key or your cron private key. Those things get automatically pruned out through the API. Um, then there's post install cleanup. So do you want it to create an admin role? Do you want it to create defaults like the standard install profile? Uh, so if I turn that on, it'll go and you'll see it says, hey, it's going to create a page content type, RDF components, image field association, um, as well as uh, vocabulary uh, tags. If you don't want it to do these, you, know, you just you select them. Um, the reason you might not want to do this and the reason this isn't selected by default is if you have features and you built your site with features, then it could potentially conflict because features are going to bundle up your thing called page. You don't really want to make something called page on top of that. Um, then it's also going to create a Drush make file. Now, you could do this through you know, a Drush make command, um, but this is providing a web interface, so you, know, you can just download that and have it build it for you, whereas you, you might not have Drush uh, and server level access to everything you work on. Uh, so you can mark whether this is for local or for Drupal.org based distribution packaging. It's a very minor difference, but um, it at least has that document in there because a lot of people don't know there is a difference. Um, libraries detected. So if you have a libraries API turned on, it's going to actually go and select all the libraries that it finds. Um, there's also support for patches, which I'll show in a second as well, which is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now is, if, you know, I'm, I'm just using default, and click download profile. And 
what it does is it gives me a tar file, which I'll open up now. So this created part underscore 10 dot tar. I'm going to take that and I untar it. And you'll see I get an info file, I get an install file, a profile file, <laughs> and a drush make file. And looking at the drush make file, you'll see you know, it has this in here, comment this out for use on Drupal.org. It's created it in a well-structured way, took into account all the modules on the site and the versions included um, to make this a little more true to the way that you would actually build a distribution. It doesn't have a specific version of dev. Uh, that's something that was introduced recently in Drupal.org packaging. Uh, so it does you know, 3x dev as opposed to you can get these strange version numbers like 3x you know, dash beta 1 plus 2 dash dev. Uh, so it'll it'll turn those into just dash dev. Uh, if if there's a need to change that back and have it be toggleable, I'm willing to have a setting for it. Um, so this is effectively the, the blueprint of my website. Um, and then you'll see it also goes and groups things that it couldn't figure out what they were, right? So for instance, live feedback is a sandbox project on Drupal.org. It doesn't have a version because it's a sandbox. Um, so it creates it a little differently, moves it to the end and says, hey, you need to add a version. So it gives you some you know, to do, like, hey, it, you know, we couldn't figure this out. Um, you'll see I have you know, kind of uh, this node reference highlight glossary, right? So that is actually a Drupal.org project, but I'm doing Git-based development here. Uh, it doesn't have a version, so it says, hey, there's something you need to do here. Um, and then Elms Media Helper, that's just a custom project entirely. So that wouldn't be included, obviously. Then we're going to get themes. You see we have the themes here. It'll do a similar thing with the custom if it can't find a version of it in the uh, And then libraries. So it's not going to be able to you know, auto-populate the download URL, so you're still going to have to find those but it did structure them in a well-made way. Um, so I probably should actually make it account for profiler and just add that, but that's not a big deal. Uh, going into some of the other files a little bit, we go into the .profile, you'll see that it auto-populates the site name on the installation form to be the name of your site. Uh, again, this is just what you put in. The idea is that you're actually building your um, you're turning your site into a distribution or an install profile um, so that people can learn from it or that you are actually building a distribution. Um, and it auto sets this. So this is a fallback mechanism in case you don't have the ex uh, exclusive flag set so that it'll just automatically select in the form uh, the name of your distribution. Just very basic type of thing for the user experience. Um, looking at the install file, you'll see it's written the profiler type of language that the profiler project tells you to do. And then it implements this API hook, which builds itself um, based on just kind of what people generally are putting in uh, install profiles. And typically, you're not giving people content, although we could add support for that in the future. Um, but you'll see it also added in this admin role because I checked the setting to add the admin role. So, minor thing there, and then in the .info file, let's see what that looks like. You'll see we've got the exclusive flag, we've got our description, our name, uh, it's 7x core, packaging information for that machine name, and then it lists all the dependencies in alphabetical order, uh, then sort of by alphabetical order within them. So active those core modules. Another thing it does is if it has things that are features, um, there's a little known glitch with features where they tend to need to be at the end of an install process, because uh, they could potentially be referencing something like uh, user permission, and that module that has the user permission defined in it hasn't been included yet, so these need to be added to the end. Um, and then, because I told it to include variables, here's all the variables that are pulled out. And so you can use the API to refine this, you know, say, for whatever reason, you don't think transliteration search settings should be uh, included, you can, you know, have it axe that. But it generally acts as things that wouldn't, uh, that would have caused a problem. It also has optional support for CDN and Boost because you, you would never want to turn something on automatically with those. Um, that's an install profile. Um, another thing you can do with this now, and I'm going to talk about this in the next video, is it, it actually comes with a drush command as well. So when I showed through the UI, you could actually just do a drush distro. Zero and zero, and get the same path.